Hi, good afternoon, and welcome to In His Chambers. I am your host, Sarah Wiggins. I'd like to welcome you um, today to the show. Why don't you go ahead and grab your Bibles, and then we're going to get into today's lesson. But before we get started, let's have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we say thank you today. God, we give you praise and we give you glory. We bless your name right now because you are all sufficient. So we give you praise and we give you glory with the fruit of our lips, Lord. Father, I ask even now that you bless the hearers of this word, God. Father God, we ask you to even now permeate the airways, the highways, Oh, God, in the waterways, Lord, we touch every person in their home, God, in their families, Lord, God. We speak your healing virtue to um, touch them even now from the crown of their very head to the sole of their very feet. Father, we ask now that you cause their ears to hear and eyes to see and give them a heart to understand and to receive the engrafted word that's able to save their souls. And right now we take authority and we bind every evil spirit and every evil force that comes against the hindrance. Um, um, and the hindering spirits that comes against your word to be heard, God, in clarity of thought, clarity of mind. We loose now Holy Spirit of truth. We loose now the angels to go forth to bring forth uh, the heirs of salvation, God, ministering spirits to minister to those, God. Um, to receive salvation in Jesus' mighty name. And, Lord God, we give you glory. We give you thanksgiving with all of our heart. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord God. So even now, I ask that you let the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, Lord God, even as I speak forth your word, Lord. Lord, we just say thank you right now. I'm giving you praise because without you, Lord, we can do nothing. So, God, I honor you today. Oh, God, and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. All right. <clears throat> Let's get into today's lesson. And we're going to get into today's lesson, and we're going to talk about a touchy subject. It's a touchy subject, but it's a, a much-needed subject. Um, I, I, I went to church on Sunday, and I saw something that was very disturbing to me. It was very disturbing to me because um, it had a lot to do with the body of Christ. And in dealing with the body of Christ, we're talking about people, people that are in the kingdom of God. Um... But this lesson applies to every person. So, if you're not in the kingdom, I welcome you to come into the kingdom um, of God. I welcome you to receive the word, to receive the free gift of salvation. Romans 10 and 9 declares, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised up Jesus from the dead, that you're saved. And so, um, if you believe in your heart, and then you make the confession from your mouth in your belief, knowing that God is still God, no matter what's happening, and you would like to accept eternal life, then this is the prayer of salvation that you pray um, to receive that. And it's a free gift. The Holy Spirit is a free gift. So you can ask God to receive the Holy Spirit at the same time that you're asking for salvation. But anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and, and, and go forward. And we're going to talk about my subject. And my subject today is we're talking about di uh, divisions. Divi divisions among you. When we're talking about the body of Christ, we're talking about unity. We're talking about love. And we're talking about, as Galatians 5 um, so prevalently puts it, um, 5, 22, 23, and 24 says, And the fruit of the Spirit are these. So, we know that the fruit of the Spirit is the Holy Spirit in you. But today's lesson is about division. And we're, we're going to start in Mark, Mark chapter number 3. So turn with me if you will. It's in the New Testament. Mark chapter 3. And we're going to get started with our foundational scripture. And we're going to say, Divisions among you. This shouldn't be because God so loved us. That he gave us Jesus. And Jesus went to the cross for us. And he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. And because he shed his blood, he redeemed us. And he bought us with a price. And so, because he shed his blood, he said we ought to love one another. Alright, I'm going to read. Mark chapter 3, starting at verse number 24. And if the kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. 
And if a house be divided against itself, the house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bond the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. All right, this passage of scripture is so it's so relevant because we know when you have division, there is anger, frustration, hostility, um, and all these emotions that have risen up for one purpose or another. But we have to understand who's behind it all. And when we look at Mark chapter 3, it tells you clearly, it says here, that if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but have an end. So there is an end to all things, meaning the, ends does, the, the end does not justify the means. So when we're talking about division, we're talking about emotional conflict. Emotional conflict, and it, and, and it is that because you have not chose within yourself to come to a resolution, a resolution to whatever is going on and going forward. Like I said, I saw I, I saw um, a whole bunch of of uh, workings, and what I mean by that is, he said, if you lack of wisdom, let let him ask, that he will give it to him liberally and upbraid it not. So that means when you are going through some sort of conflict, you need wisdom, because. If you don't use wisdom in these type of circumstances, uh, you can come to a place where you're just angry, you're disgruntled, um, and then as your emotions rise up, it's no longer God, it is that other fellow called Satan. Because the word said you can be angry but sin not. Um, but if you let it linger too long, it causes confusion. It causes chaos. It causes um, a whole bunch of um, uh, waves in the atmosphere that the vibes are not good. They're just not good. And so, in looking upon these things, um, you have to make a determination. That means you have to make a decision. You have to know if you want to live the way you live or do you want to live in harmony. Or unity. All right, turn with me to First Corinthians three and three, and we're just um, working on the foundation right now, and laying a, a, a foundation for the basis of the Word of God. And it says here, First um, Corinthians three, verse number three: For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, and ye are not carnal, and walk as men. So, it's just like I was saying, the atmosphere is not conducive to a productive environment. When you are angry, mad, you have confusion, you have chaos, the atmosphere says very negative all around you, but that's walking in your flesh. Okay, I told you before, in Galatians 5, it also tells you about the works of the flesh. And it says, these are the works of the flesh, and I went through this last week. With one of my relatives in, re in reference to uh, what the works of the flesh are. So take some time this week and look at um, Galatians 5. Because he said, who has bewitched you for you not to believe the truth? And that's Galatians 5 and 1. But then it drops down and tells you about what the works of the flesh are. And the works of the flesh that are manifested are pretty much these things of what I've just said in First Corinthians chapter number 3. But ye are yet carnal is what he said. You're not mature, in other words, so that you can handle truth. That means truth has been told to you, but you don't get it. And because you don't get it, there is an invisible barrier in, um, in motion. And so we have to say, are you yet carnal? For likewise that are among you envying and strife and divisions, and you are not and you are not carnal, and you walk as men. That means you're walking in your flesh. And because you're walking in your flesh, God's not going to get the glory. Because he said there's no flesh that will glory in his presence. 
Okay, so you have to humble yourself and come back. Come back and know that we're dealing with people. But according to um, Ephesians 6 and 12, he said, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, the powers, the rulers of the darkness, and spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. So you already know when someone is um, out of character, that is, out of character because of what has been said, what has been done, you got to know that first get to know the person because communication is a sender receiver relationship and sometimes we have invisible barriers to our hearing and sometimes we can be dull in our hearing because we can't hear what the word of God is saying and the reason for that is um, are you spending time in the word are you dying to self are you dying to the flesh that means um Taking off, taking off um, anger, wrath, malice, evil intentions. Are you taking all that stuff off? Because these are the things that war against our flesh that makes us carnal. And because we are carnal, you're dulling your hearing. You're dulling your hearing because you can't understand what truth says. Truth tells us that God is a God of love. And he says here... Um, that the kingdom that has division, strife, and all these evil works, as the book of James tell us, it won't stand. It cannot stand. Satan knows this, and he knows that a house divided will fall because he is uh, the author behind this. And because he's the author behind it, he's orchestrating and he's pulling strings and he's allowing you to have envy, jealousy, strife and stuff going on in your families and your workplace, even within yourself. Paul told us that there is a war going on. There's a war between in, in us that he said he called us, oh, wretched man that I am. OK, and, and we are wretched because. We have to allow ourselves to die to flesh so that the spirit um, supersedes whatever we're going on. And that's the Holy Spirit in us. That's the fruit of the spirit that I was talking about in Galatians 5. All right. He said here in, in Mark chapter 3. And we're just going to flip flop between the two. Because we're talking about what Paul said in Corinthians. And then also what Mark said in, in Mark. Because these were apostles that were speaking the truth, but speaking the truth in love to us. And so the word was given to us for our edification. That's to build us up. All right. So that we'll know how to conduct ourselves. Um, Satan's kingdom can be spoiled if we bind a strong man. That means this is a prayer called binding and loosing. And so once you go into prayer... At a certain point in prayer, after you worship and after you give thanksgiving and praise and all that, you know, you come before God, the throne of grace, to obtain mercy, to find grace to help you in a time of need. Whenever you find yourself in division, in strife and envy, you need Jesus. You need God um, to come into the midst of your situation because when, when God comes in the midst of the situation, even in prayer, it's peace. It's peace to every storm that you're going through. So, um... He says here that you can't spoil Satan's kingdom unless you first bind the strong man. And then you can spoil his goods. And so there is a spirit called the spirit of division. It brings men um, that are strong. Um, you know, it brings a weakness there. But it's okay because Romans chapter 8 said that the, the Holy Spirit helps us in our infirmities. So when we don't know what we, what we ought to pray for as we should, he helped us. He helped us in our infirmities, in our weaknesses. And we all have them. Please don't be fooled by anybody. We have them. We all have them. So you just have to learn how to deal with oneself while you're learning the word of, of God and then standing on his promises because he'll bring you out. It's just you have to know how to stand on the word of promise against any and all situations that are negative that comes your way. So in, in, in other words, if there is a negative situation that arises, you have to know how to superimpose a positive 
a positive um, spirit over that negative spirit. So you have to displace to replace. All right. And so once you do that, um, God knows how to bring peace. He said he knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. So God already know the end at the beginning because he is alpha and the omega, the beginning, end, the first, the last. He is all that. And then some. All right. But we're talking about what's going on with, um, amongst people. And when we're talking about people, we're talking about people and people groups. And we're talking about divisions of race. We're talking about divisions of, of um, ethnic gen gender. Okay. But you can get through all of these barriers just by applying the word of God. Applying the word of God to every situation. Okay, and so then, um, not only will you um, come from a carnal state, but you will bring yourself into a spiritual alignment with God. And by bringing yourself into spiritual alignment with God, you start building yourself up, building yourself up, making yourself strong. So then uh, you know how to bring a resistance against um, any of, of these um, uh, different spirits that try to come against you. So you know how to react once you find yourself in a situation like this. Because even though... Ephesians 6 and 12 said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But you got to remember, these are people. The enemy works through people also. Not only is he the prince of the power of the air, he also works through people. And so people, when we find people, and I'm just going to give you an example. When you say people get on your nerves or whatever, whatever. See, that's a, a radar going off in us letting us know, hey, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And now you got to do something about it. Because if you do not let do something about it, it's going to try to invade your space. And that's what the enemy does. He comes to invade and he comes to try to take over. But you got to resist him with all that is within you. Because God gave you power. According to Luke 10, 19, he said he gave you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions of all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means harm you. So you got to know that you have the power. But you got to know how to plug into the power. You got to know how to disconnect um, from the prince of the power of the air and connect into the Holy Spirit and truth and know you have to walk by faith and not by sight into that truth and stand on the word. Because he said, after having done all, you stand and you continue to fight the good fight of faith. But you do this in love. You do it in love. All right. Because the work of the spirit of division is to divide and cause one to fall by magnifying the differences with the influence of hate. It, it, that's one of the works of the flesh is hatred. So what we're going to do is you're going to counteract that spirit by uh, walking um, in the spirit of reconciliation, which is the spirit of love, because Jesus came to reconcile us back to God uh, from the fall of Adam, which is the fall of man. So because Jesus came to reconcile us, and I love this this um, verse and a passage of scripture. Let's just go there. Because most people like to say um, the scripture, which is John 3.16. But I also like to, to go past John 3.16 and go down one and just start at John 3.17. John 3.17 because it tells you about the grace of God. And it's the, his grace um, that let us know. I'm going to read the, um, 16, and I'm going to also read uh, verse 17, because it's so prevalent, because you have to have an understanding to know that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come unto the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. See, so there it is. This is why Jesus came. He came to save us. He did not come to condemn us. 
And so when we're talking about bringing division, a division is not of God. Unity and love is of God. Because God wants a family. He sent Jesus into this earth. Not only did he go to the cross for us, but he died and he shed his blood. And it's his blood that has atoned us. And because of his blood, um, God sees us through what Jesus did. So when you have the accuser of the brethren coming to bring division, Jesus said, my blood paid for it. My blood paid for it. My blood paid for it. So we have to continue to declare and plead the blood of Jesus over our life. So when you see a person coming and they have this thing called division and strife and envy. But you know those are evil works. And they're the works of the flesh. And so you know who's using them. And that's our adversary, the enemy, Satan. And so we have to know how to deal with him and to spoil his goods and to take back our possession because he's a thief. And he come to steal from us. But according to John 10 and 10, he said, The thief coming not for to kill and to steal and to destroy. But he said, I am come that you may have life and that you may have life more abundantly. So in order for you to have an abundant life, and part of that life is peace. So Jesus came to bring, to give you peace. And he didn't come to give you um, um, any evil. He didn't come to bring you evil. And he didn't come so that you would have to compromise. So that's these are all evil spirits that we have to deal with in these end times. And so we want to live a life of increase. We want to live a life of uh, reproduction. We want to live a life in health. But we have to fight the good fight of faith to get um, these promises into our life and that's just done by our confession every day and continue to walk by faith because if you look at it and then we're just going to go there go to Romans chapter number 8 because I'm just you know just sharing some things with you that I believe that are very helpful and they're very helpful tools because there's an enemy called ignorance and this enemy could be deadly if you just don't know but what we're going to do is we're going to try to educate you on the word of the living God. Because the word is sharp. It's quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And this is what Hebrews 4 and 12 declares to us. Because the word of God, it cuts going in and it cuts coming out. So that means even in your atmosphere when you find negativity, any of negative spirits around you, you know it's not of God. So we know we got to pray. We got to pray so we can change our atmosphere, shift this environment so that it will be conducive to the kingdom of God. And we can bring down the kingdom of God. And that's no more but declaring, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we want to bring about the spirit of reconciliation. And that means you have to be reconciled man to God. You have to reconcile even in relationships, husband and wife, with siblings. Um, in your workplace with those that you work with, your um, colleagues, your and the people that you co-labor with. Also, um, wherever that makes a difference, like in our communities, um, even for a long time, um, our governmental officials and our police department, fire department, because these are men and women that are on the job. But they're on the job, but they do um, community activities to protect and to serve us. So we have to show a love for them just as well as we show love for ourselves, our family members. Um, those that are close to us. Turn with me to Psalms 133. And I love this psalm because it, it just gives you the highlight of, of what of what was said. You know, and um, it was said back then, but it still pertains to us now. About Moses and Aaron. It says here, Psalms 133. It says, Behold how good and how pleasant... It is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing even life forevermore. So there it is. So when we're talking about the spirit of reconciliation, we're talking about 
God's spirit. We're talking about life. And so God says he wants a family. So he sent Jesus to reconcile us back to him so that we could come into the kingdom in unity, in love, and we can have peace here on this earth and i know it looks contrary right now because of everything that's going on i know we watch the news i don't watch it too often but it's a lot of negative um words being spoken well we have to learn how to speak um the counter of, of negative words and replace them with positive saying i mean even though it is the way it is but our words um frame our world so we got to know how to say the right words to frame our world that we will have the things that God already said that we can have. But you have to walk it out in love and do not compromise because that's the spirit also. So that means you, you're going backwards and forth and you don't have to. All you got to do is believe what God has said is true and walk by faith because the word, it is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our path. And there are many paths that we can take. But we want to take the good path, the one that God has designed for our life. So in order, in, in order to do that, we have to confess the promises that God has already set forth in his word. And then we have to minister one to another. But we have to do it, um, it with wisdom. We have to do it in love um, because faith worketh by love. And so we also have to do it in forgiveness. We have to forbear. That means we have to put up with one another. And that, that's sometimes it's kind of difficult to put up with one another. But we have to do it in love because God is love. And because God is love, we have to sometimes esteem others higher than ourselves. That means you got to deny yourself. you got to um, humble yourself. And let God exalt you instead of you exalting yourself. Because if you exalt yourself, that's called pride. And so you don't want to walk um, in the vanity of your mind as a vain person. And giving yourself vain glory. You want to esteem others higher than yourself. Because when you start building up other people, God will build you. And that's what we need um, by faith. And build our house in faith. That means we got to continue to walk in love because he said faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But faith also is the substance of the thing hoped for. It's evidence of things not seen. And then it says by it the elders obtain a good report. That means are you looking for a good report in your life? Instead of walking around with a grumpy face, um, walking in negativity. Well, you got to change what you're saying. you got to change how you do business. And then you got to come before God in humility and just let him know, God, I, I messed up. It didn't work for me. But today, I'm telling you, you can be blessed. I pray even now that you will hear the words that I'm speaking and declare, Jesus is Lord of my life. And so we say until next time. Bye-bye.